there is a question which is often asked in consultations sir which is my good planet or which is my best planet or you see is this a good planet and things like that is a planet entirely good or bad no my answer in this regard is simple that planets are good or bad depending on what we are asking see you have to understand that there is a planetary profile right so planets indicate a type of result that from the standards of society can be perceived as good also bad also it depends on what you want right but to simplify the matter for you i will divide it into four categories the result of like multiple categories can be made four five categories i will tell you the result of planet in houses the result of planet in rashis the result of planet as house lot the result of planet in connection with other planets this connection can be sitting together aspecting each other both types and when we are talking of connection once again the planet who is connected to them also all of these principles apply so coming to it one by one you know malefic planets mars saturn sun rahu are good in upchayas right third sixth tenth eleventh house if they are powerful they are good in second house also otherwise not second house is the only house where no planet is good or bad we have to see if the planet is powerful or not benefic planets moon which is more than 3 houses away from sun either side 3 houses moon is 3 houses before sun or 3 houses after sun is not good in that case moon is a malefic and being a malefic he will be good in 3rd 6th 10th and 11th house only mercury situated with a malefic will become a malefic in that scenario it will also become good in 3rd 6th 10th and 11th house only apart from that mercury sitting alone or mercury influenced by a benefic planet or moon between 4th to 10th houses from sun is a benefic planet so is venus jupiter and i also take ketu to be a benefic planet though the results of ketu are a bit different so i will not put ketu into this category these benefic planets are good into kendras 1 4 7 10 houses 7th house no planet is good so 7th we can exclude 1 4 10 houses they are good 5th and 9th houses they are good second house they are good 10th 11th house every planet is good so they are also good in the 11th house you see 8th house and 12th house no planet is good as such so this is the house based result of planet now if the planet is situated in a good house why he is situated in a good house because see this benefic or malefic nature trait of planet is decided based on what the planets signify for example saturn is taken as a i always say this saturn is taken as a malefic planet because it indicates a sorrow grief hard work patience multiple attempts and all of these things right so if the saturn is situated in 6th house then the sorrow grief multiple attempts will be given to enemies enemies to compete with you will have to do multiple attempts enemies will have sorrow enemies will have grief right so it is good so the regarding the houses which is good for the planet when the planet sits in the house it gives good result for the natural significations of the house for example you say fourth house indicates happiness when there is a good planet in the fourth house right jupiter venus sun uh, jupiter venus moon mercury then they give good results related to fourth house now this good result is more or less related to the emotional things psychological things indicated by the fourth house this is the basic point that we have to understand i always explain in the class that bhav is emotion right so emotional and psychological results that are indicated by the house becomes good when suitable planets are situated there right kendra kona second 11th house benefic planets and malefic in 3 6 10 11 house when suitable planets are situated right the results are good so you say when benefics are situated in the fourth house you are happy you have a calm mind 
right you are comfortable these emotional mental psychological results are good whereas when malefics are situated in the fourth house then what happens mental tension is there you are not satisfied you have lot of wantings and desires and all of these things right so mental emotional psychological setup of the house gets disturbed now comes another thing that is regarding the result concrete results of the house four thousand indicate property also four thousand indicate vehicles as well four thousand indicates lands also four thousand indicate home as well prima facie if a benefic is situated in the fourth house because it is a good planet in the fourth house he should give good result in all these matters so as i explained right now that it is emotion or mental psychological thing so if there is a benefic situated in the fourth house it will indicate that you enjoy your home you are satisfied in your home you are happy in your home that it will indicate but how many properties you will have whether you will have it early in life or late in life that is rashi department that is decided by rashis right the level of result is decided by rashi but one thing is very certain that even if a very powerful malefic is situated in the fourth house it can give you multiple properties it can give you properties quite in young age it can give you a very big property but happiness from that property satisfaction from that property contentment from that property enjoyment of the property may not be there so it can be that property is very good very palatial but it is at a bad place it is having a bad neighborhood it is having a bad surrounding or the property is causing you debts or there are many you know problems in the property your children are not living right it is not suitable for your lifestyle and mul multiple variations can be thought out right based on the significations of the planets see what is rashi rashi is a heap rashi means quantity so the quantity of result and quality of result and the concrete result is decided by the rashi right and for that matter is also decided by the rashi lord you see in vedic astrology there is no difference between rashi and house because of the same reason i don't believe in bhava chalit chart i don't believe in bhava chart right because houses and rashis are not different we say we say mars is the fourth house lord no planet is lord of any house mars is the lord of the rashi which is falling in the fourth house so you automatically say mars is fourth house lord right because houses and rashis are synonymous so whatever result is indicated by the rashi that is also indicated by the rashi lord so if there is no planet situated in the rashi you will go to the rashi lord if there is a planet situated in the rashi in that matter also you will go to the rashi lord in this case the planet and the rashi will indicate 50% and 50% of 50 50% result of the houses each right that is the basic now regarding rashi exalted planet planet in own rashi planet in mulu trikon planet who is vargottam are good planets debilitated planets are bad planets planets situated in the rashi of their enemy are also bad planets situated in the rashi of their friend is a good planet apart from that see combust planet is also a bad planet planet going into a planetary war is also a bad planet these are not rashi conditions but they impact the rashi results and bhava results both because it is not only the rashi condition it influences bhava results also so combustion or going into planetary war is considered very problematic because it disturbs both the rashi result and bhava result right this is a basic understanding that we need to have if a planet is well situated in the rashi or the rashi lord house lord is well situated then quantity based result for the house is good now this quantity based result i always say if it is fourth house it will indicate multiple properties you want that it will indicate multiple vehicles you want that it is a good result seventh lot it will indicate multiple life partners that we don't want so that is bad so this is subjective like a planet being good or bad is subjective this is also subjective that's why i say no subjective apart from that 
for the concrete result of the house rashi you have to see right for an example if there is a malefic situated in 10th house one may not be very happy with their profession with their professional status how their colleagues and bosses treat them but if this is a planet in good rashi then the situation is good person have got a job profile which is more than what they can ask for which is more than their qualifications and their income is also adequate now they are dissatisfied they are complaining it is because of the malefic now you see the same planet is good and bad at same point of time it is giving you a good job good pay scale and everything more than what you deserve right but if it is a malefic then it is going to give you dissatisfaction discontentment if this is a malefic as for house lordship you say this is sixth house lord then i told you before that natural malefics are malefics because of their signification same goes the case with house lords also so if sixth lord is situated in 10th house but vargottam being vargottam it will give you good professional status a job which is more than what you deserve it will give you good income if this is a natural malefic you say mars then because of difference of opinion fighting politics wrong distribution of designations and roles there will be dissatisfaction and if this happens to be sixth lord also then because sixth house indicates enmity competition there will be dissatisfaction regarding profession because of enmity and competition also so you see this same mars is giving different different results by being situated in the 10th house so we cannot say that this mars is good or bad it is subjective it is depending on if you are asking that will i ever face a challenge free professional life then mars is the 6th house lord that indicates challenge mars by significations also indicates challenge so no a challenge free professional life you will never have but if you ask that will i be able to progress to a good status in my professional life will i achieve a ceo or a managerial position in my professional life yes you will be able to achieve that why because of mars only right so a planet can show polarizing results in a horoscope at the same point of time right without being contradictory contradiction is not to be there a very basic funda is there in astrology that if the planet is indicating two opposite results you have to synthesize the result with the best of your knowledge if you cannot synthesize it then you have to see whether good factors are more that will give precedence to good results bad factors more that will give precedence to bad results right if both the factors are equal then both results are cancelled this is the particular reason why i say vedic astrology needs a lot of intellect this is the particular reason also many people cannot practice vedic astrology properly they go into pseudo systems i don't want to take a name names of the system but they go into pseudo systems why because vedic astrology wants you to be intellectual have high reasoning intellect decisive powers and all of that right so this result is well understood now multiple other layers can also be added into it the house lordship layer i have just added right the house lordship layer we have added by saying that the result of the 10th house is not only indicated by the planet in the 10th house but by 10th lord also so if there is a planet in 10th house and then there is the 10th lord then you have to synthesize between their conditions for example there is a debilitated planet in the 10th house but 10th lord is exalted now this debilitated planet is indicating bad professional conditions whereas the exalted 10th lord is indicating good professional conditions now whenever dasha antar dasha of this debilitated planet in the 10th house and the friends of the debilitated planet in the 10th house or the planet connected to the debilitated planet in 10th house by aspect or conjunction will run one will have bad professional status one will lose their professional status suffer in their professional life whereas whenever the dasha antar dasha of exalted 10th lord will run planet connected to exalted 10th lord by the virtue of conjunction aspect will run when the dasha antar dasha of friends of the exalted 10th lord will run one will gain good professional status one will have name fame status recognition awards in their professional life right 
So when the result seems to be contradictory that there is a debilitated planet in the 10th house, but the 10th Lord is exalted, then the dasha as a time factor you will have to put because both results are indicated simultaneously. We can segregate it based on the dasha that in this dasha, this result will be there. In that dasha, that result will be there. Now adding this to the point that if the planet situated in the 10th house is also the 6th Lord, not only talking about the 10th Lord, but also talking about the planet who is situated in the 10th house, that is Lord of which house. So I told you, you will take the signification for the house. For example, we are taking Saturn as a bad planet because Saturn indicates hard work, Saturn indicates struggle and multiple attempts. So these are the natural significations of Saturn, right? Now say the Saturn is situated in the 10th house, it will make you struggle, it will make you have multiple attempts, the progress in the profession will be slow. But if the Saturn is Lagna Lord also, then Lagna Lord indicates what the native likes. Lagna Lord gives name, fame, status, intelligence. So Lagna Lord Saturn in the 10th house, it will indicate slow progress in a profession, it will indicate multiple attempts in profession, it can indicate a little bit of sadness in profession, it can indicate that the person is detached with their profession, but Simultaneously, it will also indicate that one will have name, fame, prestige, owner in their profession and slowly, slowly after some time, one will adjust with their professional setup. You say around the age of 30, 32, one will adjust with their professional setup and they will actually start enjoying it later on, right? So no result in Vedic astrology is contradictory. You have to synthesize them properly and then predict. And because a proper synthesis is needed, that is where the uses of intellect is called for, right? So this is the result based on house lordship. Now, apart from that, a planet can be connected to other planets by virtue of conjunction and by virtue of mutual aspect. I already told before, once again, I will tell you that aspect is more powerful than conjunction. So you say if the 10th Lord is aspected by 8th Lord and conjoined by 5th Lord, Conjunction will conjunction with fifth lord will result into a Raj Yog. Tenth house indicates profession, tenth house indicates status, fifth house indicates fifth house makes you visionary, fifth house also indicates status. So tenth house and fifth house both indicating status, person will have a good status. And tenth house indicating profession, fifth house indicating vision, person will be very visionary in their profession and whatever predictions, assumptions, ideas that they will have regarding their profession, all of that will come true. Right? That is the basic point. Now, in this scenario, if the 10th Lord is conjoined with 5th Lord, but expected by 8th Lord, now 8th house indicates a sudden unfortunate events, misfortune, ups and downs, lack of stability. Now, because the aspect is more powerful as compared to conjunction, the result of the 5th Lord conjoined with the 10th Lord will be felt at a lower intensity as compared to the result of 8th Lord being felt with respect to 10th house. So person will lose their job more often as compared to getting status in a profession. So person will get status in a profession because 10th and 5th Lord are conjoined, but they will quickly lose this job afterwards also because 8th Lord is expecting the 10th Lord. Right. And after losing the job, finding a new job will be difficult. It will be time taking because 8,000 tickets misfortune. But whenever the person will find the next job that is based on Dasha Antra Dasha, the person will be getting a better position as compared to the position that they lost or left in the previous job. Right. So as a planet is connected with other planet. Now, based on the natural signification of the other planet and house lordship of the other planet and the nature of the other planet, we will also have to modify the result. Right. In this modification, we have to keep in mind that aspect is more powerful than conjunction. Based on that, we have to predict the result in quantity that this result is happening more often. This result is happening less often. The result from aspect will disturb the result from conjunction if both of them are present. If conjunction is not present, only aspect is present. Or if aspect is not present, only conjunction is present. Then it is a simple clear analysis that you can easily do. Right. So in that particular case, when there is a debilitated planet in the 10th house, but 10th Lord is exalted, you have to just simply jump to Dasha and your work is done. Whereas in this particular case, when there is a bad, conjun bad good conjunction with the 10th Lord, but bad aspect, you also have to keep in mind that because aspect is more powerful as compared to conjunction, the result of 
aspect will be more powerful, more stronger, more dominant as compared to the result of conjunction. And based on the same formulas which we have used so far to analyze the horoscope, we have to analyze the conjunction also. Right? Because every house cannot be connected to every other house. See, 10th Lord can go in one house only. It cannot go into more than one house. Planet will be in the 10th house, that is not necessary. If a planet is in 10th house, he can be Lord of maximum two houses only. Right? So in this way, because 10th Lord can go into one house, there can be a planet situated in 10th house, but that planet can be Lord of two houses only. Three houses can be connected. You say more than one planet can be connected in the 10th house and these planets can be Lord of almost every house. But then having a planet in the 10th house, having multiple planets in the 10th house and having no planet in the 10th house, they also have their own significations. Right. For example, if there is only one planet in the 10th house, one is well focused in their profession. But if there are more than one planets in the 10th house, then one is often disturbed in their profession. They find it difficult to make decisions regarding which profession they want to join, what they actually wanted to do. And if the planets are three or more than three, if the planets are three, then it is highly disturbing that the professional dilemma disturbs the personal life of the native also. If the planets are four or more than four, then it can make a combination for sannyas also, which can deny professional life altogether or an active professional life, the common professional life that we understand, it can deny it altogether. Right? Now, can it not be that a person is doing good in a profession and is also not confused in his profession, is well focused in his profession also. So doing good is in a profession he can do by the power of the 10th Lord or by the power of the planet situated in the 10th house. And because only one planet have to be situated there as to avoid the confusion, the planet can be maximum lot of two houses only. So only three houses can be connected together. This will also indicate that the results are few or the area of profession is not very, uh, you know, not very eventful. So how connection from other houses will be made? It will be made through conjunction or aspect of other house lots. Like in that example, when there are more than one planet in the 10th house, what is actually happening between the planets, conjunction is happening. So more results come by virtue of conjunction and aspect. Right? So you don't have to be afraid regarding the number of influences that are coming over a house. You have to take planet one by one and have to analyze it, bisect it, dissect it one by one. Right? And keeping all these principles in mind that I have explained to you, this is based on my experience of more than a decade now. Right. If you analyze keeping these principles in mind in a small video, whatever I have told you that this is the Sar Sanchev Nichod. Right. In nutshell, the complete analysis of horoscope in a nutshell in short. With a few words, right. If you understand it properly and in any horoscope, take planet one by one, analyze it one by one. And you will be able to read a horoscope like a professional better than 80% of the professional astrologers out there. Right. So this you have to do. And make it very clear in your mind that no planet is entirely good or no planet is entirely bad. It all depends on different factors and it all depends on what we are wanting. Right? 80% of the cases. Now, what we are wanting, this is, this is something that I will want to explain. Maybe we have not covered it. So one thing is there that if... 10th Lord is exalted. There is a debilitated planet in the 10th house in the Dashantra Dash of the debilitated planet. Bad results will happen. In the Dashantra Dash of the 10th Lord, good results will happen. So we can say that 10th Lord is a good planet. Can we say that? Now you say this 10th Lord is exalted in 8th house. Then this 10th Lord is not entirely good. Why? Because 10th Lord going in 8th house is not good. 8th house indicates tension, trouble. Sudden unfortunate events, misfortune. Now, because the planet is exalted, the quantitative result of 8th house will be good. Longevity will be long. The quantitative result of the 10th house will be good. One will have multiple job offers. The status in the job will be good. But at the same point of time, there will be tension related to profession. Because the 10th Lord is in 8th house, the person will overwork, which can create health problems also. So this planet is positive and negative at the same point of time. No planet is entirely positive or entirely negative. On the other hand, 
टेक अ पर्टिकुलर सेटअप लगना लॉर्ड इन नाइन्थ हाउस नाउ लगना लॉर्ड इन नाइन्थ हाउस इज अ वेरी गुड सेटअप If this lagna lord is debilitated in the ninth house, then this Rashi results is not good. But okay. If the lagna lord in tenth house, ninth house is combust, then the Rashi condition is not very good. If the lagna lord in ninth house is exalted also, but this lagna lord is sun, then it is a malefic in the ninth house. So satisfaction and other mental and psychological results related to ninth house will be hampered. So this planet is not entirely good. but generally if you just analyze from this perspective because the thing that i have explained you just now is to analyze things one by one so only analyzing lagna lord in ninth house house to house result this seems to be a good combination this seems to make the person fortunate lagna lord in ninth house will make the person fortunate now this person asks me a question that sir i want to do business i want to do my own endeavor i want to open my own shop or anything any business i want to do will i be successful no lagna lord in 9th house is very good for job there you can succeed very good for government job also very good for any type of job for business no lagna lord in 9th house is not very good for business so you see this entirely good like if looking at from only one perspective lagna lord in 9th house house to house result this seems to be a very good combination but if the question is that should i do a business the answer is negative no you should not do a business if you try to do it you will not be successful should i do a job yes you should do a job you will be very successful into it so this is that the planet is good but if you are wanting the result of business then it does not support that in this scenario i cannot say that this planet is good for everything right this is something that you will have to understand in nutshell no planet is completely good no planet is completely bad planet gives all type of result it depends on what you want from the planet planet will generally have a contradictory result same planet will be good in one area bad in another area the result of the planet will be well manifested in the dasha antar dasha of the planet that have to be judged very carefully i don't support using vimshotri dasha always right so in my consultation my approach is take the suitable dasha as per the horoscope like based on the yogas we say that this yoga is present it is this type of person in the same order based on the different yogas i apply different dasha in the horoscope so use the applicable dasha and based on that dasha decide which planet is activated right now which planet is having the power of time right now based on that decide what result is prominent for the time being and the same planet in his same time period can be good for a house bad for a house each planet is polarizing planet can be good and bad at same point of time it depends on what we are analyzing what result we are wanting so there is no planet who is entirely good or entirely bad right this is what the principles of astrology tell us this is what the experience tell us right so leave this point out from your mind that a planet is entirely good or entirely bad it is not right thank you for watching the video